Monica, how you doing? I'm good, Kimberly, how are you? Doing great, thanks. I'm kind of excited to talk about goals today, especially this time of year. Yes, it is almost the new year, a great time for New Year's resolutions and to set goals. I know I always like to grab them at the end of the year and review and see if my year went as planned or not and uh, revisit those. So it's cool. My goal is not to have resolutions so much, um, it, except to have like obtainable, reachable, valid um, efforts that result in um, success. So um, when you and I were talking about it, we decided that we wanted to use the SMART goals model. So how about we talk about that for a little bit? Sounds good. Um, do you want me to go ahead and explain what that means? Um, I could read it pretty easily because what I would really like to have, if possible, is you explain how to use a SMART goal in the gym. I think okay. that's very relevant for our, our officers. So sure. that's okay with you. We'll go ahead and do that. Okay. So how to write SMART goals. And what is a SMART goal? A SMART goal, that's S-M-A-R-T. Um, it's a statement of important results you are working to accomplish. And you design it, you write it, you flesh it out in a way that's clear and um, you know what to expect of yourself so you don't waste energy and you don't waste time on things that aren't gonna help you reach your results. So what is the, are the criteria? The S is for specific. What will be accomplished? Um, what are we wanting to do? M is for measurable, and that's um, a way you're going to measure if you were successful. Did you reach your goal? A is for achievable. Is it doable? Um, there's got to be some, you've got to be able to actually do this. You know, like when you and I were talking, I said, you know, me doing 100 pull ups is in a month. It's not achievable. It's not being negative, it's just not, it's not achievable. Right. Um, and R is um, reasonable or relevant, depending upon which model you're looking at. And it's like, does it matter? Um, does it align with broader goals? Does it have anything to do with actually um, your end result? And T is for time, time bound, an end of, um, you know, an, a time frame to work within. So people are like, okay, well, um, what, do, what do I do with that? What, what, what do I do with all that? So specific can actually, um, I think it'll make more sense if you walk them through your idea in the gym. So instead yeah. of giving little examples, how about we tie it all together with one example and you offer that. Is, is that okay? Yep. So a lot of uh, female first responders come to me for individualized fitness and nutrition programs. So obviously that starts with having a goal and having an idea of um, why you're wanting to hire me as a, as a coach one-on-one -on -one with you to help you reach your goals. So it starts with having that goal and that vision in mind. So a good way to put out a, or at least write out a smart goal um, or a good example of, of something, a pretty common scenario that I would get is most women have at least about 20 pounds to lose up to 50 pounds to lose on average when they come to me. So that could be your specific goal. Hey, I want to lose 20 pounds. Um, to make it measurable, some of the measurements that we use often are the scale weight um, and then your measurements around your hip, waist, and chest. You can measure those weekly to see if those are tracking up or down. And then also taking photos. Um, so taking progress photos side by side is a great way to measure your progress there. Um, and then there's also a lot of other progress ways that you can measure progress. And another good one is like feeling better in your clothes, your clothes fitting better. So that's another like non-metric way of, of also seeing um, that you can still measure, measure progress with if you're going for weight loss. Um, is it attainable? So that comes within the time frame. Certainly you can lose 20 pounds in any given amount of time. Um, however, if you're, if you're going to lose 20 pounds in one month, probably not realistic. Um, for a 20 pound goal, we're looking somewhere between like five to 10 months, depending on how quick you lose the weight. You can lose two to four pounds a month. So that ends up being about five to 10 months. So if you're saying, yes, I, I, I'm okay with losing 20 pounds within the next six months, I'd say, yes, that's attainable. Um, reasonable or relevant, um, most of you, that's your why. 
Um, so you want to be strong for work. You want to be confident. You want to have your command presence. You want to make sure you can survive a foot pursuit or a ground fight um, and not be absolutely winded doing your basic job duties every day. Um, so that obviously is very relevant to your career and also your lifestyle. A lot of people will tell me, hey, I have diabetes in my family. I don't want to go down that road. So that's relevant to you in a personal way and also in a, in a career lifestyle way as well. And then back to the time domain, we'll, we'll typically set a reasonable time domain for you so that it is attainable. So those kind of go back and forth. But like I said, if you're if you're looking at 20 pounds, you're looking at about five to 10 pounds or five to 10 months to make that achievable, achievable and also a steady um, seeing steady progress and implementing those lifestyle habits that make that sustainable uh, long term. So that goes over each of those bullet points of having a SMART goal. And we usually walk those out through on, on anytime I chat with you during the, the first initial call or throughout the process of, of revisiting those goals to make sure you're staying on track with where you want to go. So if I understand it correctly, if I'm a, if I'm a client of yours, I come in, I'm like, hey, Monica, you know, I have this 20-ish pounds I want to lose and I want to lose it um, as fast as possible and I only want to do it through diet and I want to do it in two weeks. And then you're like, and you want, let's make it reasonable. And then you say, let's do it this way. And you say, so you want to lose 20 pounds and we'll know that you've done it when you lose 20 pounds and your clothes fit better. Um, it's achievable because we're going to set a correct date for you. And I, you would tell me, I highly recommend, you know, minimum of five months. Mm -hmm. We do this and it's relevant and reasonable because it's going to improve your health. Um, you'll be able to do your job better. You're just going to feel better. And then again, let's set a goal for you for five months. And so then I'm like, oh, I, I can do this because I know what I'm going to do and I know how I'm going to do it. And I have a time frame on it and I'll know when I'm successful. Did I explain that in a way that um, would work in the gym? Yeah, that's correct. And, and that also, I mean, that's, a, there's, you can set more than one goal for a big picture goal, if that makes sense, which I like doing is, is taking the big picture long-term goal and then breaking it down into smaller goals along the way. So usually what I'll do is I'll set weekly goals for my clients to focus on, whether it's with nutrition or fitness, um, to help take those smaller steps to the bigger picture too. Okay. So staying on the same topic, if I'm going to lose 20 pounds in five months, we don't just I don't just kind of willy nilly go through those five months and just hope at the end of it that I lost the 20 pounds um, right. would have made some dietary suggestions and we'll know if I stick to them. And then you would have made some recommendations in the gym and the workouts and stuff. And, and we're going to have, um, I, I don't want check-ins is might not be the right word, but we'll have, um, we'll be measuring, uh, accomplishment, I don't, I don't want to use the word success necessarily because that sometimes sounds like failure if it's not met, but, you know, looking for those, like you said, intermittent goals, those smaller goals in the process. Yeah. It's like, like a good visual is like climbing a staircase. It's, it's one step at a time. You're not trying to jump up the whole staircase. You're taking each little step. And so each week there's a weekly goal. So you're taking that next step. And, and if you meet that goal, then great, we go to the next step. But if you don't meet that goal, then we'll stay on that step until we we accomplish what we need to achieve and then we'll take the next step. I think that illustrates better what you were yeah, like trying that. to say yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. And then you and I were talking earlier about, you know, um, when it comes to things in the gym, even if you don't check off that end goal, you oftentimes get so many other wins, so many other achievements in the process. Like, let's say that me, the same person, I didn't lose that 20 pounds but I can run faster, farther. I'm stronger. Um, I no longer have that low back pain. I'm sleeping better. I put to, you know, fought. I no longer have the sugar cravings and stuff. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of other wins, um, in that. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yep, definitely. So we were also discussing about how this can work professionally for our officers and we were talking about promoting. And I know that different agencies promote individuals differently. So if when I'm explaining this, if it, if it doesn't make exact sense, just try to personalize it for the agency um, of the listener. 
So remember, SMART is specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound or a time frame. And if we're going to use the example of promoting to sergeant at the next opportunity, um, depending upon the department, that's going to be the time frame of it. So working for Dallas, we only had um, promotion exams every so often. I mean, it might you might go years without it. So to say, I'm going to promote to sergeant in the next three months, well, that's not going to happen because if the test isn't given, you don't get to pick the time frame. So, you know, um, for, for a place, a, an agency that does um, written exams and assessments and stuff, the individual can say, I want to promote to sergeant on the next opportunity or the next promotional exam. And how is that measurable? Well, because you get promoted. <laughs> you know, it happens. You get promoted. Um, is it achievable? So this comes down to the individual. Is it achievable? Well, are you willing to study and pass the written test? Um, are you willing to go to extra training if you're not that strong at test taking? Um, do you keep your discipline record clean? Have you met all the other criteria? Like maybe you have to be a trainer or maybe you had to work outside of patrol, whatever it is in your agency. Um, is it achievable? Um, for most people, yes, it's probably achievable if they're willing to do the work. And then relevant or reasonable, yes. If it's achievable, and you're willing to do the work, it does become reasonable and relevant. Um, and then time bound, that then comes in again, like we said, you can't promote if the test isn't offered. You, if you work for an agency that does not let you promote to sergeant until after you've been there five years, you can't promote to sergeant at three years. So the time on this one might not be as up to the officer as um, some other goals. But you will know that you have um, followed the outline if you've promoted on the next um, promotional opportunity. So I know that's kind of a simple um, example, but why not use a simple example and let our listeners um, personalize it for themselves? Um, have you had any experience with SMART goals? I have, and, and if you don't mind, I'd like to offer a different uh, perspective on that last example. Absolutely. Um, and, and this is just coming from the, the last note of, of breaking it down into smaller goals. Um, like looking at it from a newer officer perspective, like maybe you come on, like you get out of FTO and you know that one of your main goals is to promote. So maybe you look at that time frame as like a five to 10 year time frame. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's still specific. You still want to promote to sergeant, but maybe your your measurements become different on and those become your small steps on how to get there. Um, as far as getting in the training, maybe um, becoming an FTO is a good way, um, a good thing to put on your resume, um, good experience, also your experience on the job, um, any other specialty units that might help um, to your credibility or your resume when you come to your interview board or your testing or anything like that. Um, and then knowing your, for us, it was always knowing your, your city ordinances, your state statutes, and also your policy that was all on that test. So um, obviously a lot of that comes with time, but it does take time to study that too. So maybe making small goals to, I don't know, read one policy a week or go yeah. go over one, one title, one chapter of your state statute code per week, things like that, where you can break it down. And, and those are measurable too, because you can check those off. Yes, I did it or no, I didn't. Um, and then maybe you can also break those down in like the first three months, I'm going to do this. I'm going to read policy. The next three months, I'm going to read state statute. I mean, you can you can customize it to yourself. Um, so then that makes it more attainable or achievable that when it comes, the test comes around or when the next opportunity comes around, you get to promote the first go around instead of waiting um, because you didn't pass a test or you didn't do well on the interview board. Um, it gives you more time to to do research on those things too, so that you're you're more successful when that comes around. So you're planning ahead. Um, I love more, that. I love that. Absolutely, absolutely. I love that because you know everything that we like to many people like to complain about all the stupid stuff they ask you on the written tests and all that stuff like that. But there are agencies, there are um, professionals that have decided that you need this knowledge to be at that rank. And, you know, like I never needed to know the distance of the ground between the bottom of a bumper on a commercial truck, right? I didn't need to know that. I didn't need to know it. But it's what we were tested on at one of our, uh, for the senior corporal rank here in Dallas and stuff like that. But I wanted to promote. And so I learned it. I learned it. That's what it comes down to. I wanted to promote. So I learned it. 
But I do love the organic way that you described it. I loved the way of making yourself a better officer, making yourself a better product. So when the opportunity to promote comes around, you're already ahead of the game because you weren't right. willing to have that knowledge until somebody was going to test you on it. Love that. Love that. That goes into the way, like whenever I'm coaching my clients, um, how I do it is um, I, you know, if this is something that they're interested in, I have them, you know, see what is the goal they want? You know, how do they see themselves in a year or two years or three years? What is the goal they want? And then what is it that you did to get there? What is successful? And so whenever they tell me what they did to be successful, they have just, they've just listed everything they need to do. They've listed it because they said, um, you know, I have to have, like you said, I have to pass this, know this, know this, know this. I'm like, well, there you go. There's your game plan. You know, now you can do it. So yeah, very organic way of achieving a goal, very organic way of achieving a goal. So is there anything else you'd like to offer on SMART goals or just goals in general? Um, just from, just from me and how I've been my entire life, I grew up as an athlete. So I, I always had, I always had to set a goal of some sort, um, with each season that came up. So I, I think it's good to sit down every six months or so, at least once a year at a minimum to write out maybe five goals at most, um, that you want to improve in your life. And it can be career, it can be personal, it can be financial, it can be relationships, religion, like anything. Um, just a couple of, of those topics to maybe think about in your life but any of those I think it's good to sit down and to write out and to have a plan um, because then every six months or every year you can look back at it and it's the same thing you evaluate where it was at um, if it didn't happen why not um, what you can change to make that happen if it's still a relevant goal to you um, you know I don't know I've had goals before where I'm like, Hey, I want to compete in an Olympic lifting meet. And then it's one of those things that's like not real urgent. So you get the year comes around you're like, Meh, maybe next year, but we'll leave that on there <laughs> for good faith. Um, stuff like that. So I, I think it's always good to have a goal. And, and I've encouraged people before, even to like on a Sunday to just set your intentions for the week or set three weekly goals of, um, what you want to get done within that week, because obviously you can't reach the end goal without focusing on the daily habits that are going to help you get to that end goal. So it, it, you have to have that big picture view, but then eventually it starts very small on a molecular level of, of how do I get there? What habits do I need to change or what things do I need to do every day to make sure that I'm working towards that goal? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, writing things down, we know, and I say we by, you know, the experts and, and this type of stuff that I like to study and learn from that um, putting things in writing almost doubles the opportunity, uh, possibility, probability of it happening, of it actually occurring. Um, I've started doing something the last couple months. It's two minutes of gratitude in the morning, two minutes of gratitude at night. And it's written. And one of the questions on there is what are three things that you are going to do tomorrow? So one of the last things I think about at night are what are the three main things that I'm going to do the next day? And it's like, it just like, it puts it in my brain, but it also like, I don't worry about it. It's like, mm -hmm. I'm going to do, I have a plan. I know what I'm going to do. And that helps a lot. And it really helps me, um, like you said, with the small goals and also with the bigger goals, because you're not going to reach the big goals if you don't have those little goals, if you don't have those small incremental things, you know, those little tiny little habits that, that we that we change and massage and um, and do. So, okay, why don't you tell everybody how they can get a hold of you, please? So, Monica Eaton with Five O Fierce and Fit. You can find me. Um, best place to find me is probably on Facebook, Facebook group Five O Fierce and Fit group, um, or you can find me through my personal Facebook page, which is just Monica Eaton. Um, I'm on Instagram and TikTok too, uh, by those same handle Five O Fierce and Fit. Um, also on a podcast, started a podcast and YouTube. So I'm branching out to everything. Um, but it, uh, if you search five Fierce and fit, you can probably find it. Um, there's not too many of those out there. I don't think, um, but yeah, Facebook groups, probably the best, but if you're looking for all sorts of content, you can find it on all of those platforms. Okay. And I am Kimberly Stratman of to the point coach.org is my website. And I am on a Facebook public group called Bold and Brave Women. So I coach high-performing women, life coach. So um, I help them basically get from where they are to where they want to be. They know how to do it. They just need a little bit of help getting there. And I also um, coach first responders towards retirement. 
And there was something that I was going to, oh, your YouTube videos. A lot of your videos are also on my YouTube channel, which is um, To The Point Coach. So anybody who wants to see Monica and uh, listen to some of the great things that she has to say, you can find her videos there also. And videos that she and I are, that she and I are on together, you will see both of our faces on the screen. You will see both of us there. And so there's quite a few videos. And uh, Monica has some wonderful, wonderful, wonderful advice, inspiration that's very useful at well, all times of the year. But especially now, because as much as I don't want to sit, you know, push resolution, we are setting goals. We do want to finish the end of the year successful. And we want to go into the new year, setting ourselves up for success personally and professionally and definitely physically. So we will be back again next week with um, more of our suggestions on how you can thrive. Yep. Anything, everything. If you guys have questions, let us know. Anything you want us to, to speak on, let us know. And uh, we'll be back again next week. Thanks so much. Bye, Monica. Thanks. See you later.